Best thing about being in the middle of nowhere is that it's the best way to come upon cool friends like mine. There's Christina. She's been working on a rocket heater for this wafati, this big lump of dirt. Has actually got a kind of a hobbit house in it. Kind of a low budget hobbit house that's evolved from the $50 and up underground house book designs from Mark Mike Oler. Look, it even says welcome. But Christine has been here for the last week, busting it out, making this a much better place to live, including having heat. Mm -hmm. Show us what you got. This is the bunk house. Uh, we started off the week uh, with a different layout and use of the building. There was a platform bed in this corner, making it a very tight space to work in, and a desire by the uh, owner to have the system in this corner. So our design goals were working through maximizing uh, heat for the occupant with a relatively small system, and being uh, very aware that the building is covered by soil, which will act as thermal mass. And because of some site design issues, uh, isn't uh, entirely passively heating itself seasonally uh, and exchanging that heat seasonally. So we wanted to be able to put out as much heat as we could into this room uh, as safely as we could. So we have cleared out and leveled the site. You took the and bunk out of the bunkhouse. Yeah, we took the bunk out of the bunkhouse. Uh, we will be moving the bunk towards this corner, uh, creating a, a small kitchenette uh, that will be right here when you walk in. Just a little table. Maybe you can set your tea kettle on, on top of the rocket here and be able to walk into your uh, little office dining area to the right. So this is a rocket mass heater. It's a tiny for a tiny house. We've been doing a lot of tiny house type yeah. of things ever That's since really the greenhouse one from way back in the day. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so this is a tiny house rocket heater. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the design we've actually used in other tiny houses. And this one we tried to make it better for uh, a cob thermal mass and wood there's a lot of wood near things and that can be a problem what did you do to deal with that uh we carefully designed the the ducting of the system to be uh at, at least six inches uh, but ideally about 10 inches away from the wood to start with uh, where we couldn't avoid that we put up some uh, homemade heat shielding which is just additional duct uh, old used duct with the spacers can't remember the material spacer right there this is really important and it has open air gap at the bottom so that any heat that hits it um, causes airflow to cool the wood because wood over time if it's left too hot becomes easier and easier to catch on fire and so 10 years later for no reason whatsoever things burst into flame is not a good way to leave a leave a building so we are not finished uh, we will be installing heat shield in this back corner yeah up on that elbow there needs to be heat shield back there but then there's a, a heat shield as a, an insulated pipe that uh, goes through where the wall needs to be finished up with some cob or something and then there's a, a T out here that's tilted down so that any rain that gets on things drips outside the building instead of inside the building. Thank you, Kirk Mobert, for that suggestion. And I don't know if we'd call this a model uh, chimney, but we are working <laughs> as safely as we could with the materials on hand. That's right. When you've got just a little bit of scrap and, uh, and it's all been picked over for other projects, <laughs> um, then um, it's a little... It can be a little sketchy, but uh, we really wanted to keep it away from the ma the wood as much as possible. And um, so this bench is local dirt, sandy clay, soil with straw, so cob. Um, we did fill the first foot with sand, uh, although I'm not sure that that will have much insulation value because it's a very fine sand. 
near silt. So. I'd be curious to see how much of the heat comes into the room. Mm -hmm. But there. it was on site and mm -hmm. easier than full cob. And uh, since we didn't need that much mass in the bench itself, knowing that the building is, is going to be uh, a big part of our thermal battery, went for the easy route and filled up with sand first. Yeah, we want we want to keep the heat in the building having it instead of having it sucked down away into the ground mm -hmm. and having a relatively large radiant barrel there uh, makes a big difference for quick heat. So uh, I really like how this is set away from the wood over here because uh, if you're sitting here in the middle of the winter 12 hours a day burning your uh, rocket heater, you can get a cob mass up to the point where it's dangerous to have it uh, near wood. So having an air gap there, um, it, uh, if it does nothing other than have peace of mind for me, it was worth all the extra trouble for the other people. Um, but I think it actually does make a difference to have air gaps and to not try to push it to have uh, your system too close. I really like this thing that Christina was showing me earlier that they did. They, they're calling it the sock rock. <laughs> have a place that's, that's uh, warm enough to dry your socks when you come in, but not warm enough to catch them on fire, which is <laughs> an entirely other smell. Um, I've done that before. Oh, yeah. Don't stick your socks in the fire. Ugh. <laughs> and don't dry stuff on top of here. People have caught no. buildings on fire doing that. It looks really tempting. Oh, it'll be fine. I'll watch it. And then it's on fire. People do that. So this is really cool that this is coming along, that uh, uh, that our friend uh, Gray is going to have some warmth in this building. Uh, I hope he spends some time this winter stuffing cracks so that it's, uh, uh, so that it's less cold uh, in this building. But hopefully that layer of soil over the top of it will give him some... Uh, hobbit-like comfort and we'll have to come back and check on him next spring uh, if he's still uh, not frozen. It will be very much because of the rocket heater that Christina and Gray have been working on with all the other lovely people here at the Rocket Mass Heater Jamboree 2021. UncleMud.com <laughs>